Hi, Sam Flegel here, and today I want to talk to you about how do you find your voice as an artist? I mean, how do you even know once you have found it if you have? And what do you do with it once you have found it? I think these are things that a lot of artists think about. I know I have thought about it for many years, and it's something that I continue to focus on. Today I'm going to do this while working on an ink drawing of Kernanos, the Celtic horned god. A drawing that started off as an ink blob and evolved into an acrylic painting. And I think it really illustrates some of the points we're going to talk about today. Let's dive in. Now we've talked together in previous videos about how much I value letting your mind wander. And that's really what this first stage is about, but it's also related to finding your voice. What sort of things do you draw when you're drawing nothing? Or when you're just playing with shapes? Are there certain subject matters you find yourself coming back to when you doodle? This is a good indicator of places where you're starting to find your voice. You're finding your shape language and starting to understand what it is that you're looking for in a drawing really often comes down to just what do you want to draw? What do you want to paint? And I don't mean what do you think would look cool or sell or be valuable. It's really more about just if, if you weren't paid, if you weren't going to monetize this in some way, what would you draw? What would you paint? And sometimes you don't know the answer to that. And a great way to start is you start with some ink and let it run down the paper and you get out your fat brushes and maybe some paper towels and you just make shapes. And as you can see with this one, it, it started to come to a subject I'd covered before, which is Kernanos, the, the horned god. He, in this version, is kind of got a, you know, a deer face with these wild, you know, tree-like antlers. And yeah, it just really started to come together for me. But it's not about speed or about rushing through the process. It's just about tricking yourself into sitting down and not overthinking it. It's, you know, just an ink blob. It's just a drawing. It's just a painting. These are not major things. These should not be sources of epic stress in your life. Just chill out. Put some marks on a page and figure out what they are. And the more you do that, the more you'll begin to answer the question of what is your artistic voice? Now sets in the long part of any work, which is to just fill it in, to complete it. And that can be boring, or I prefer to think of it as meditative. You've gotten over the hurdle of what's it going to be, and now you're just putting down interesting lines. I like to think of each section of a painting or a drawing as if I were to crop it down, it might make a neat little abstract painting. And so Again, I'm thinking about what do I like, but specifically, I'm thinking about what lines do I like? What shapes do I like? These antlers look like trees. What sort of trees do I like? And the answer to those for me is, you know, I like gnarly twisted trees. So these are going to be some gnarly twisted horns. And, you know, I'm not looking at a lot of reference at the deer. And so the deer's face is going to look a little more cartoony and the more I work as an artist, the more I realize I love that cartoony look because it's it's me. It's, it's my voice shining through. It's not influenced. Now, that's not to say that I don't use reference, right? Because I do, and I think you should too, especially in the beginning. You know, it's because I've drawn some deer with reference that I'm able to approximate a deer without reference. Now, I am looking at references of trees. I have a collection of gnarly trees that I keep in a reference folder, and I look at the same few trees whenever I, I need to put some trees in a piece, and I keep coming back to that. And that's another part of developing your voice, is as you wander the world, as you search the internet for reference, keep a reference folder of pictures that you like. And as you do this, you will be guilty to build your own reference portfolio, your own reference catalog that is fully informed by what you like. But you need to consider what you like. You should always be asking yourself when you see something visually striking, 
Why do I like this? What about this is interesting to me? Always be observing. Always be calculating and thinking about these things. And, you know, if it becomes obsessive or gets in the way, that's fine. But again, a great tool is go for a walk. Get out in nature. Let your mind wander. But as your mind is wandering in kind of the meditative technique, allow yourself to return to that question of, what sort of shapes do I like? What are the trees in the nature I'm drawn to? What birds interest me? What wildlife interests me? That rock looks cool. That moss looks cool. But why? What is it that I like about it? And just continue to answer those questions for yourself. And in time, you will begin to build your own reference library, your own shape language, and your own voice, your own style, because those words are used interchangeably for artists. Voice, style, they kind of mean the same thing, which is to say, how do you recognize when a drawing is yours? Now, one thing that I get asked a lot is, you know, how do you know the difference and how do you balance between what you like to paint and what you think you like to paint? And that's a great question because, you know, sometimes it's like, okay, that's what the art director wants or that's what the audience is going to like. And you feed into this idea. I mean, you can really see this on certain popular art websites where it seems like even though all these artists are different, somehow they've homogenized into a similar style. And that's because they're not thinking a lot about what they like. They're thinking about what the audience would like. And so you lose your voice in that particular exercise. And so the reverse of that would be to, you know, not overthink it and just kind of start drawing and painting. But here's the trick is your mind really likes to overthink things. We want to feel like we're in control. It's the ego coming through. And a lot of developing your voice is letting go of that control. And it feels like a muse or a god or a goddess or some sort of angel or extra outer force is working within you. And I'm not going to get into a conversation about what that may or may not be. I can only talk about how it feels. And when it feels right, it doesn't feel like you're doing anything. In fact, sometimes it even appears obvious and boring. And then you start thinking, oh, the things I want to paint, oh, this is so clever, this is so cool, what a hot idea. But that's your brain kicking in and trying to seize control. The things that you're really best at, the things that are going to resonate strongly with other people, and the things that as you draw and paint more, people will point to as, oh, that's your style, that's a thing you do. It's going to be the things that to you seem easy, that to you seem simple, that to you seem as though they're inconsequential. And what you don't understand is that you have just tapped into your gift. That's right. Each of us has been given gifts. Each of us have things we are better at and things we are not better at. We have our own inner struggles, but the things that are our gifts, the things that we are naturally drawn to, will feel simple. And because they feel simple, because they feel easy, we're prone to ignore them. We're prone to let them fly away and say, oh, it has to be harder than this. But what you don't understand is if someone else were to do that, if someone else were to try and draw eyes the way that you draw them, or if you find that hands are easy, or that you know drawing animals is easy for you, well, I can assure you, there are plenty of artists out there that struggle with the things that you find to be easy. And I know for me, one of the things I find to be easy are kind of cartoonishly interesting creatures, uh, hooded figures with big noses and kind of exaggerated comic book-like stuff, but done with painterly tools. And the more I lean into that, the more I just accept it, the more my work gets recognition the more I sell stuff, the more I post something on Instagram and people go, oh man, I really like that. This drawing, you know, this one looks like you or I really see what you did here. But on a, a lot of times, those are the ones that are only, you know, two hours, three hours, four hours. This particular drawing of Kernanos 
was exactly that. It was a couple of hours drawing. And, you know, you're seeing it sped up in real time. In fact, you know what, if you're still with me at this point, why don't you just go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you want to check me out on Patreon, that's patreon.com slash Sam Flegel. I do a monthly artist hangout where we have talks like this. We talk about tools, we talk about materials. I do some demos. We talk about Norse mythology and other aspects of mythology in general. And if that's something that interests you, we always have room at the table for one more person like you. But anyway, back to the drawing. Or should I say, back to the painting. And that's where we are, is how do you find your voice? And let's go over what we talked about. So the first is, you're going to just start making marks and scribbles and working out your shape language in a sketchbook or in pieces, the way that I'm doing here. And you're not going to overthink it too much. You're just going to make stuff. And preferably, you're going to make a lot of stuff because that's one of the ways that you start to find your voice within your own work is by creating numerous things again and again and again and seeing what happens. You can't find the threads because I can assure you, it's not the things that you're thinking. It's, it's the things you're probably ignoring. And those things become more evident the longer that you sit with your drawing skills and your painting skills. So that's step one, make lots of stuff, make time for these little practices or studies or throwaway sketches or playtime, uh, personal work, wh whatever it is you want to call it, just dig in in those areas and keep making lots of stuff, okay? And then the other thing is keep track of what's easy for you and lean into those things and be very aware of when you think something is boring, when you think it seems like an obvious solution, and just lean in hard in those things, even though it feels like you should do the opposite. That's right, when it's obvious, when it's boring, lean in. And remember, the ideas that seem clever and cool, those are the ones that are probably leading you down a stray path, all right? All right, well, I've been doing these videos about once a week, and I've got a few more for you if you want to check those out. And again, I'm Sam Flegel, and we'll talk later. I hope you have a great week drawing.